It sits on 58 acres near downtown Columbus and is where some of the most innovative and top secret work you'll find anywhere in the world is being developed. Hello, I'm Andrea Cambern, and this is Battelle, home to the first Xerox machine, compact disc, and some of the most fascinating people you will meet anywhere. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to take you inside, give you access to this world leader in science and research development. Started here in central Ohio by a man with a vision and his will. Welcome to Inside Access. With $3.9 billion invested each year in projects, Battelle is a world leader in research and development and operates facilities in more than 100 national and international locations. It all started right here in Ohio's capital city with a few machine shops, foundries, and a will. Born the son of a steel industry pioneer, Gordon Battelle was groomed to manage his father's business holdings, but he had a much greater vision. Early in his career, Battelle gained a profound understanding and respect for scientific research and how related innovations could improve lives and make industry more competitive. However, in 1923, at the age of just 40, Battelle died of a ruptured appendix, but prior to his passing, he set the stage for the future. In item 21 of his will, Battelle designated his fortune to the founding of the Battelle Memorial Institute. The will is, um, was written in 1920, three years before Gordon Battelle died. And he, he was frustrated by the fact that he saw inventions at the early stage that weren't finding their way into the commercial marketplace and, or into the national security marketplace. For example, um, advanced armor. He saw things being invented at Ohio State and he wondered why those weren't. In, in, in use in World War I, for example. So in his will, he wrote a very prescient will. It was a brilliant piece of writing. And it's not actually the will. The will has 26 items. And it's actually item 21st, in which he bequeaths the rest, the remainder of his estate, he gives bits away, to the purposes of translating innovation into application. So that's a wonderful engine, because it says, Profit's not a dirty word. You, you make money because that's the right thing to do. It's good business practice, and then you reinvest it in good things. And that makes Patel a special place. This is Building A on King Avenue, built back in 1929. Kind of an ode to the Art Deco era. It was also the main entrance for Battelle until the mid-60s. What a grand entrance it was with its marble floors and walls, these ornate sconces. It was also the place where employees would come to pick up their checks. And if you look closely, you can see remnants of that pay window now hidden behind a painting of former president and CEO, Carl Court. At the west end of Building A, you'll find the main library. Even in this day of the World Wide Web and search engines such as Google and Yahoo, Battelle scientists still come here to do their research or to catch up on periodicals and other publications. A cutting edge company with old school habits. The King Avenue campus is comprised of buildings that have been added as Battelle has grown. With different architecture and sizes, they are a testament to Battelle's growth through the years. Each is connected by a maze of hallways that seem to go on forever. Many of these hallways have piping overhead that snakes its way to the various laboratories. However, in their newest building, the cutting edge of technology meets the cutting edge of building design. Building 20 houses 42 labs on various levels. Each floor is spaced apart by interstitials, in other words, space between the floors for connecting water, gases, chemicals, or just about anything else a lab might need. It's a unique design that was pioneered by Battelle to facilitate the ever-changing world of research without long delays in removing walls, ceilings, and rerouting piping for new projects. The building um, is designed to have 42 separate modules that can be expanded or contracted depending on the research program needs. For instance, we started with a single bay for fuel cell, fuel cell chemistry research. Mm -hmm. 
and it's already expanded twice uh, throughout the life of that program. As you walk around, you notice that several of the building's walls pay tribute to the many accomplishments of the scientists, researchers, and other employees of Battelle. These plaques honor those who hold 14 or more patents. Some of the inventions have unusual and mind-boggling names. Reusable abutment cushion extension. That's a device that goes on the inside of a racetrack wall or maybe on a highway to cushion the blow of an of a impact from a vehicle and may in fact have saved Dale Earnhardt's life had it been on the racetrack where he died. Interesting stuff. Okay, how about the millimeter wave viscometer? That's a device that does whole body scanning, for instance, at uh, airports to help you find contraband. Many of the other walls include other accomplishments in areas such as philanthropy and volunteerism. Team Patel was created um, as a way so that Patel could support their staff that are volunteering out in the communities in which they live. We have currently 130 projects right now, of which 60 are here in Central Ohio and the rest are out across the nation. When it's staff driven, that gives cause for a project director to be able to gather up their friends, their co-workers, and even their family members to come out and help something that they're passionate about. Just one of the interesting displays here at Patel is this, which walks you through the history of the Xerox machine, which you may not realize was developed here at Patel in the early 40s. You'll see everything here from the man behind the idea, Chester Carlson, his original patent idea, which he brought to Patel to develop. And look at this, the first image that was duplicated in a process that was called Xerography. But cooler than that is this. This is a model, a working model, of the first Xerox machine. Chester Carlson was a physicist, inventor, and patent attorney who invented the process of electrophotography. A year later, he made an historic breakthrough when he successfully reproduced an image with an electrostatic charge. Turned down by both IBM and the U.S. Navy, among others, Carlson came to Battelle. Over the next several years, Battelle negotiated a series of licensing contracts with the Halloid Company, which sold the first Xerox copier in 1950. In 1961, the Halloid Company changed its name to the Xerox Corporation. The Xerox machine is a perfect example of the company's vision statement. Build long-term relationships with our clients by anticipating their needs and delivering economically and socially valuable science and technology. That vision is evident everywhere, including their work with the Ohio Soybean Council. Patel is producing bio-based toner for copiers, plasticizer compounds to turn PVC into soft, pliable tubing and blood bags, and bio-based paint that replaces lead-based paint on farm equipment, all from soy products. Patel has developed their work in five areas, energy, health and life sciences, national security and defense, laboratory management, and community and education. Each is different, but each has the same goal. Innovative businesses see the future and make it better. The autonomous submarine has the capability uh, to be uh, preloaded with information. Uh, it has its own brain, essentially, or artificial intelligence. It's able to react to changes underwater that it picks up through its sensors. And these systems are mostly used uh, to go out and uh, collect information about the ocean floor. They can collect information about where mines could be potentially uh, planted. And they're going to be used in the future in, as offboard sensors on some of the newest combatant surface ships. To get even more information on Battelle and Inside Access, head to our website, insideaccess.tv, where we have all kinds of cool stuff for you to check out. Show segments, deleted scenes, still photos, Yes, even outtakes.